as I'm really disgusted with the current state of video game releases in 2022 and 2023 so far. Yo, that's poggers. I feel like if enough people say enough, something might change. It feels impossible to ask everyone to vote with their wallet because some of these games you want to play and the fear of missing out really makes it difficult to wait. Uh, imagine all the people who waited to play Sekiro and then found out about the ape. That kind of stuff. I didn't get the option to find out on my own. I knew about it immediately. And that's really unfortunate. I was robbed of an opportunity. All because I wanted to make sure that it was a game that I might enjoy. It was a game that was well received. Spoilers, by the way? I feel, I feel like the first game you have to talk about is the Callisto Protocol because this is a game that uh, a lot of people are salivating at the mouth for. Uh, this is a game that is the spiritual successor to Dead Space. Dead Space is one of my favorite survival horror games of all time. Dead Space 1 and 2 are fantastic top tier games. Callisto Protocol is a rhythm game. It's maybe not my place to criticize some choices that are made. Obviously, a lot of what the Callisto Protocol is came from Dead Space pretty directly. Uh, you have meters on your back to show, I believe, health. You have the telekinesis and you have the dismemberment system, which is a little bit different in Callisto Protocol, but it's, it's dismemberment to electric boogaloo. Like it, it's different enough but it's the same thing. <laughs> it's different enough. I love that. The issue is the game released in such a poor state that they immediately had to start working on patches. Obviously poor frame rate. You have environmental controls that are extremely difficult to navigate through as well as really poor indicators of a lot of combat scenarios. So in the game, you have the option to dodge hits by pressing uh, left and right, which is very rhythm-esque, but it's interesting. I mean, it is innovation. It's not particularly interesting, I think, and it's not very involved in combat. And what it does is it makes combat a very personal thing one-on-one. -on -one. But the problem is in Callisto Protocol, you are in combat with multiple enemies at once. So the second you get locked into this, like, cha, 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 well, someone's gonna come up behind you and then shove like a whole crowbar up your ass. And then what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What What are you going to do? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Well, you're just gonna take damage and try to move on. Now, I will say that they have recently released some patches to make the game run way smoother. Uh, they've done some quality of life updates as well. Healing doesn't take uh, eight metric years. They're clearly focusing on the game. Here's my, my big issue. The ending to the game isn't in the game. It's not there. It's coming. Here's the game. Here's the end somewhere. Not, not here. That's really frustrating to me, but it's not the worst offender. Oh God. See games releasing in a poor state isn't a brand new thing. It's actually something that we've been experiencing for years. Looking at you, Ubisoft. Uh, but we're not going to talk about Assassin's Creed Unity. I like to think of myself as someone who objectively looks at concepts of games and the companies that make them without having too much bias. But I listen, listen, Linda, Linda, li Linda, listen with your eyes. Listen, I was so ready for Cyberpunk 2077. It was actually nasty. I had made plans to beat it several times. I like I cleared every game I wanted to play. I wasn't going to stream any other games. I was like, Cyberpunk 2077, let's go. Come on. I can't tell you the, the grief I felt when Cyberpunk released unplayable uh, 19 frames a second. And at the time, my my computer wasn't a slouch. I had a I had a 1070 Ti. Um, I had a six core 12 thread processor. I had 32 gigs of RAM, like it, my computer was a workhorse. 
it should have been able to run that game, at least on medium. No, I had to go into the INI files and edit them in order to get about 40 frames a second. That's wild, 40 frames. Now that's my experience. That's all I particularly cared about, but the rest of the internet went on record. Jack, show the video of the person who found springs in a window that broke. Wow. Now show the video of the guy walking through a car Wow. Now show the perfect T pose kill. Wow. Not to mention things like placeholder text being in the finished game. And thirdly, you just have so much lack of polish that nothing is forgivable. You have characters walking down streets and there's no one. No cars driving by, no civilians. The city is dead, it is a ghost city. That's terrible. You have textures not loading when people are this close to you. I'm, I'm so blown away by the lack of care and concern that went into the release of Cyberpunk 2077. I trust that CD Projekt Red is a company that cares about the product that they release because The Witcher 3 was fantastic. It was so stinking good. But CD Projekt Red really dropped the ball. But I think that this last game is actually the greatest omission of dropping the ball. Not only is this disappointing to, to talk about, because it, it it's more than just like a game releasing in a broken state. It's actually the quintessential death of a gaming series that is so near and dear to my heart that it frustrates me and it makes me sad and other emotions. And that's... Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. This game released 2015. So this is an issue that goes back at least seven years. Uh, this game released September 29th, 2015. I believe it. the last touches on the official game were finished like September 25th. Like there are reports of this game being worked on all the way up till the end and disc being shipped out with no game files at all. Ultimately, nowadays we look at game file sizes and this isn't that big of a deal, but I promise you, in 2015, people were having hemorrhages, strokes about this. The install file of the main game was 4.6 gigabytes on the PS4. The day one patch was 7, it was 7.7 .7 gigabytes. Now I'm, I'm not quite sure. So let me let me let me go to Jack real quick in our uh, our math division. Uh, Jack, can you tell me uh, how much more 7.7 .7 is than 4.6? Well, you see, actually, that's pretty easy if, if you just carry the. Hold on a second. No, no, no! This can't be. This can't be. This doesn't make sense. This, this just doesn't make any sense. This, this, no, 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 God, no, no, no. Dear God, that's nearly double. The thing is, you could absolutely forgive something like that if the game didn't run poorly. This is the first Tony Hawk game that came out that didn't release a new mechanic. Small revision for the Tony Hawk uh, Pro Skater 5. They did release a new mechanic and it's called slamming. It's where you violently bring your character 
down to the ground as fast as mechanically possible, I guess, which is unfortunately tied to the same button as grind, the triangle or the Y button. This doesn't seem like a big deal at first until you realize that this means that you can no longer buffer grinds the same way that you would uh, to create larger combos. So if you try to hold down uh, the grind button to ensure that a small gap will be made in between grinds, uh, you will just bam, baby, bring yourself down. Uh, that's super unfortunate. A uh, part of what made Tony Hawk as great as it was in two through whichever, whatever ones you played through, I played from two all the way up to project eight and I kind of stopped there, was the ability to customize. You could customize a character you could customize a deck. You could customize your tricks. These became like very big parts of the game. And unfortunately, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 just has pre-made stuff that you can pick from. And that sucks. They literally removed one of the best parts of the game because we don't, I don't know why. I, I have to assume it was because of time constraints, but I don't have the exact information and it's not particularly a subject that I'm passionate. It, it's not exactly something that I'm concerned with enough to find out. You know, like with a Tony Hawk game, you have this expectation of kind of arcadey, not as realistic gameplay, and that's fine, but there is a quality that you would expect in a Tony Hawk game where everything's kind of snappy, where the game should just feel smooth. Every slight gesture of your thumbsticks should mean something to the character. It should be translated as like a an alteration to the character as they are, but unfortunately not. The game was floaty and felt bad. Balancing felt bad. And Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 was so bad and so disappointing that it killed Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 was so bad that a re-release of 1 and 2, the best games in the series, I'll fist fight you, couldn't bring the fan base back. Like, what do you do? So if you made it this far in the video, I, hey, thanks. Love you. If you think that there's a game I should have mentioned but didn't, please bring that up in the comments. Tell me what games made you the most upset about a poor release in the comments below. Below the like button. Like, comment, and subscribe. That's always awesome stuff. I just asked you to comment and like twice. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Uh, I love you, bye-bye. I love you, bye. I love you, bye. I love you, bye. I love you, bye.